Thank you, Speaker. Today, on behalf of the Greens, I return to introducing the Residential Tenancies Act Tenant Protections and Flood Response Bill 2022. This bill seeks to amend the Residential Tenancies Act 2010 to provide for two things. The first is to increase protections for tenants generally across New South Wales and additional protections in flood impacted areas. And the second amends the minimal, minimum standards for rental properties across New South Wales, which protect renters from living in conditions that are detrimental to their health by inserting additional fit for habitation requirements that a property must be mould free and have adequate waterproofing. Last week, I explained some of the details of point one of the bill on how this will address the urgent need to increase protections for tenants in flood impacted areas, a ban on most evictions for at least 12 months and caps on rents increased um, caps on rent increases to protect vulnerable renters and stop greedy opportunists from profiting from the crisis. I want to take another moment to acknowledge that this week, many of the communities have faced further catastrophic floods and are facing those floods now in the Northern Rivers and across the North New South Wales. A month ago, we are watching, from what happened a month ago, we are now watching the same rain water down, the same waters rise and the roads disappear. And I want to recognise the trauma and the hurt and the pain that has been inflicted on those communities. I also want to recognise that this is a crisis that has just begun. Once again, I want to acknowledge all the members in this place who have been impacted and the work that them and their staff have been doing to be able to address the impacts of the floods in their communities. For those members, the only priority right now is looking after their communities and the suffering and finding accommodation, access to food and water and getting kids access to school and making sure that the trauma is not having too heavy a burden on them. It is up to all of us now to do our work in this chamber to support those members and those communities, to recognise that the broader housing crisis that was escalating already in the region is going to be even greater as a result of those floods. And with this bill that the Greens bring today, we have the opportunity to be able to provide that flood response needed to be able to address the rental crisis up north. As I've already outlined, the details of the additional protections required for renters in the flood impacted zones in particular today, I will focus specifically on the second aspect of the bill, if I may, Speaker, proposed protections around rent for renters across the state. This bill makes amendments to the minimum standards which will benefit those in flood impacted zones, but also assists with providing additional protections for renters across New South Wales. And we are calling for the provisions relating to the landlord's general obligations for residential premises at section 52 of the Residential Tenancies Act to include a requirement that rental premises are both mould free and have adequate waterproofing. These provisions strengthen the existing requirements for rental properties not to be subjected to significant dampness with respect to floors, ceilings, walls and supporting structures and to include adequate ventilation and adequate plumbing and drainage as determinations of the property's fitness for habitation. In my experience, both as a renter and as an advocate for renters over many years, I can confidently say that the existing regulations are not making homes fit for habitation. We know that at the best of times, poorly insulated, poorly ventilated, leaky and stuffy rental properties are prone to mould outbreaks that cannot possibly be controlled by the measures available to individual tenants. The recent rain events and catastrophic flooding has made matters even worse. So often, we hear from renters who struggle to get their landlords or real estate agents to address mould issues and who are forced to live in houses that ruin their clothes, ruin their furniture and make them sick. And then if the landlord does do anything to fix it or the real estate agent steps in to actually help them fix anything, they make them feel like they should be grateful for the fact that someone has come to finally address what is a mould issue in their home. Some, were, some renters have been forced to live in unsafe properties while they waited and waited and waited for action on mould in their homes. Some were evicted because they asked for action and have the mould removed. Some copped rent increases when it was finally cleaned up. Some got sick and moved out. Some spent thousands of their own money trying to sort this out. And let me take a moment to just put some of those statements on the record. And there are no shortage of statements. 
One resident from Dulwich Hill said, our rental property would seep water under the skirting boards when it rained, and it would be about mopping it up all night. Furniture and walls went mouldy, and we were told by our real estate agent, it's not that bad, it only happens with bad rain. That's what contents insurance is for, they said. They started ignoring our calls and emails, so we just had to move out. And let me guess what happened? No doubt the landlord then put the property back on the market, hiked up the rents, and then the same property issues happened to yet another family. Another wrote, we ran dehumidifiers constantly and scrubbed every weekend, but it came back overnight. My partner lost his sense of smell and taste. I couldn't sleep, my asthma was off the charts, and they just offered to paint over it. Another said, I was told by the real estate agent, it's something I need to manage and deal with myself. Fast forward to now, and mold covers the ceiling, the window seals, the toilet, and whatever else is damp. It is impossible to get rid of myself. Another says, there is mold in my place. It was there when I moved in. The landlord says it's my fault, and said we have to pay for removal. We've cleaned it, but it's taken all the paint off. My old property triggered my eczema, gave me nosebleeds, asthma, you name it. We realised what was causing it. And we didn't realise what was causing it until we left. Another wrote, I have mould rotted through my bedroom wall. It contains, it rains on the carpet. There is a mushroom colony growing in the corner of my ceiling. Now people think about this for a minute. We are not talking about people who are wanting to allow mushroom infestations grow in their wardrobe. We are talking about people that rent often older properties, often in the inner city or inner west of this very city, who have no ability to force a landlord to take action to address the dampness issues and ensure their home is free from mould. This is not an issue of their doing. This is an issue with the property that they are renting. They are paying exorbitant rents and the landlords are failing to act when it addresses when it comes to the issues of mould. And there is only one way to make landlords act. They're not going to do it out of the goodness of their heart, because I tell you, the interest of landlords is basically to just make more profit out of people. The interest of landlords is not to do it out of the goodness of their heart. The way that we make landlords do these things is by putting them in, in legislation and saying that you must ensure that your rental property is free from mould. You must ensure that it's waterproofed. It's not OK for rain to come down in the middle of someone's lounge room onto the carpet. It's just unacceptable for that to happen. And it's this government that is allowing them to get away with that by refusing to stand up to landlords because they're more interested in taking big money from property investors than they are from standing up for the rights of families who are living in mould investors' homes as a result. One wrote, I lost thousands of dollars worth of furniture, clothes and shoes and all the real estate agent would do was ignore us. Another wrote, my housemate and I had moved out of our rental a few weeks ago after reporting the growth of mould some time ago and our landlords are not doing anything to resolve it. This ended up with my housemate developing a horrible respiratory sy symptoms and ending up in hospital. None of this is okay. None of this is reasonable, and this has to change. Every rental property should be mould-free, and the law needs to ensure that landlords take responsibility for making sure that that is the case. Let's just take a minute to think why the New South Wales government here in the state might be reluctant to do this. Maybe because the New South Wales government has been known to be the worst landlord in the state when it comes to the condition of public housing in this state. People would know the lack of maintenance that is done on public housing across the state, and maybe, maybe the state government is trying to avoid live, allowing them to live mould-free in public housing, and so therefore does not want to stand up to protect renters' rights. Many homes are, are infested with dangerous levels of mould now after the rain and floods, something that tenants did not cause and should not be responsible for fixing. That is why this bill addresses the minimum rental standards, so that renters are protected from living conditions which are detrimental to their health by inserting mould, free and waterproofing as fit for habitation requirements. Last week I touched briefly on the provision in this bill that is about renters in New South Wales needing to see an end to no grounds evictions except under specific circumstances. And I'll go, more go into more detail on this now. The Greens are putting this on the table once again as an urgent and necessary amendment to the Residential Tenancies Act. And we are not alone in calling for an end to unfair evictions. It was endorsed by about 100 peak bodies and housing organisations who partnered with the Everybody's Home campaign back in 2018, when we all hoped that the New South Wales government would make what Dr Chris Martin 
Martin, a research fellow at UNSW's City Futures Research Centre, has said would provide the single biggest reform of most benefit to tenants. It also has the bonus that it costs absolutely no money. The government can do this significant housing reform that will improve the lives of so many people in this state and it will cost them zero dollars. Have they done it? No. Dr Martin has also provided research to show that the rate of no grounds evictions occurring in tribunals in New South Wales and Victoria has, is more than half of similar evictions in the United States and he calls this an eviction crisis. No grounds evictions or unfair evictions are one of the most problematic and unjust provisions in the New South Wales Residential Tenancies Act. It has two impacts. The first is that people, when they complain or raise concerns about maintenance issues, instead of the landlord fixing those issues, are booted out of their home, given an eviction notice, so that the landlord can avoid fixing the problem. So if your oven's broken and your gas doesn't work, or you've got mould growing in your cupboard because there's a leak, and then you say to your landlord, you say to your real estate agent, I really need you to fix these things, the real estate agent and the landlord can issue you with an eviction notice for complaining and then put the property back on the market, not having fixed the oven, not having got rid of the mushrooms or the mould in the cupboard, charge more rent to a new lot of people who then do the same cycle. And why is that an issue? It's an issue for two reasons. The first is people are displaced from their home. The second is that the report by the Tenants' Union on eviction hardship in the housing crisis showed that the costs of being forced to move are high, really high. The average cost of a move for renting households in New South Wales ranges from 3,215 for a single person or household in Greater Sydney through to 5,400 for a family household in regional New South Wales. Imagine having to bear these costs repeatedly, as happens frequently to renters who have no protections from these unfair evictions. Now, I know that this New South Wales state government loves a voucher, right? Vic Minister Dominello loves a voucher, serves New South Wales app, gives you vouchers all the time. You get your active kids voucher, you get your creative kids voucher, you get your voucher to take your kids on a holiday, you get your voucher to take your kids to the movies, right? The New South Wales Liberal government loves a voucher. Well, I've got an idea for a new voucher. What if the New South Wales state government every year gave every renter in the state a voucher at $3,215 for a single person or $5,400 for a family to pay for the cost of having to move every year because they are failing to act to end unfair no grounds evictions in this state? I think if you worked out the cost of that voucher scheme versus just ending no grounds evictions, it would make a lot more sense to just end no grounds evictions. We want tenants to have security in their homes. It is good for our communities and it is good for our society. It is not good for children to have to move schools every couple of years because their families have to move to a different rental property. It is not okay for older people to have to move away from their connections to community centres, to community gardens, to be able to, to, be able to then find a new place to call home. We've also included in our amendments, um, in our bill, uh, the guidance to tribunals to prevent retaliatory evictions, which we know are so common as landlords simply throw tenants out if they seek repairs. The system as it is now is completely biased towards landlords and that absolutely needs to change. Tenants are treated like second class citizens as money earners for landlords who are indispensable and this is capitalism at its worst. This bill also seeks to limit rent increases across the state because if we're not going to cap rents now, we will continue to see them rise to the point where people are unable to be able to pay those rents. And I notice that as I'm speaking right now, I can hear the nurses and midwives out on the street outside this very parliament protesting because the right to protest should be a fundamental human right. Can I just remind the government after last night's debate? The nurses outside are protesting because they want to see fair patient-staff um, patient ratios, but they're also protesting because there is an outrageous cap on public service wages in this state. So we say, well, if the state government wants to cap wages, then there's one simple thing they can do as well, cap the rents to peg them at the rate that you're raising this public service wage cap. So this bill seeks to say that rents cannot increase in the state more than the public sector wage cap increases. And so, that will make sure that there is some alignment between the wages people are getting and the rents that they are paying. 
We know that inflation is hitting people hard. A full-time nurse quoted on the ABC's 7.30 report program recently said that her income after expenses was not enough to live on and she now has to work on weekends. Recent data shows, reveals that some 40% of renters in some of Sydney's electorates are suffering financial stress with some extraordinarily high percentages between 61.5% and 76.5% of renters financially stressed in a handful of key New South Wales and Victorian electorates. Under these conditions, rents cannot continue to rise and the Greens are willing to put rent caps on the table because nobody else will have that conversation. We are not scared to stand up to landlords. We are not interested in big developer donations. We are here because we know that families and people who live in rental properties are doing it tough and that landlords are adding to this problem and that the New South Wales government is providing a protection racket to landlords because they know that they are the worst landlord in the state managing all of the public housing property as badly as they do. We have to do better. We know that in 2019, women over 55 were the fastest group of homeless people in Australia. Figures from the Older Women's Network and the Australian Human Rights Commission show that there has been a 55% increase in women aged between 55 and 74 seeking assistance for homelessness in the last decade. Many of you here in the chamber this morning um, have heard, many of you here in the chamber over the last weeks have, have spoken strongly about the tragedy occurred as a result of the floods. These amendments go a long way to assisting not just those vulnerable victims in those catastrophic flood regions, but also renters across the state who are crying out for help. I hope that Labor will look at this bill and will provide a backing for it, and I hope that we're setting the scene for the fact that renters need to be front and centre of the focus in the lead up to the March 23 election. They should know and people should know that no grounds evictions need to end. It is clear from the events that have been going on recently in our state that we need to act. And I urge the Premier, Dominic Perrottet, the Deputy Premier, Paul Toole, and the Fair Trading Minister, Alini Petinos, with the Minister for Planning and Homes, Anthony Roberts, to acknowledge the level of crisis that are facing renters in this state and take the crucial steps to implement solutions. The Greens have done this work. We have drafted the legislation. We understand renters' rights and what renters need. I've been advocating about this since 2014, before being elected and working in consultation with peak housing and advocacy groups. This bill is fair and it is urgent. Ministers have come and gone, but we are here and this is what people who rent in New South Wales need and they need it now. I really, really believe that it is time for the New South Wales government to act. It is clear. It is clear that the growing level of the housing crisis in this state can no longer be ignored. It is clear that the climate crisis is turning into a housing crisis. And it is clear that the non-stop rain that has occurred across our community has created a significant amount of mould and damp problems in our houses and in our communities. So, Speaker, can I urge all members of this chamber to look at this bill? Can I urge the minister responsible to take a moment to look at this bill and feel free to take parts of it, particularly the flood response elements, and bring it back as a government bill if they want. But we know that this urgent reform is needed. We need an end to no grounds evictions in the state. We need to ensure that the fit for habitation requirements include a mould free and a waterproofing of all properties across the state. We need to see an, a ban on any evictions in flood impacted areas across the New South Wales region. And we need to see a cap on rents to see a finally an end to the exorbitant rents that people are paying so they are not having to make the choice as to whether or not they can feed their children, whether they can buy medicine or whether they can pay their rent this week. Thank you, Speaker.